Hello there, it is me, Jordan Peterson, great intellectual mind maverick of the online internet era. It's been a little, I'm gonna be frank with you guys, it's been a little, it's been a little rough the last few weeks because, um, I haven't been able to find a job, but I've been very thankful that the Gay Programming Podcast has invited me as their new cultural cultural writer uh, on culture, because that's kind of what I do. I'm a big culture guy. Uh, and yeah, I guess today's um, opening uh, Jordan Peterson contribution to the Gay Programming Podcast is going to be uh, Jordan's Top 3 Songs. So uh, yeah, here's my top three favorite songs in case you're ever sitting around wondering what to do and uh, you know, while you're cleaning your room maybe, you know, these are the type of j jigs to be listening to while, you're do while you do your homework and clean your room. So uh, number three on the top three Jordan's top three songs list is uh, Super Freak by Rick James. I, I mostly love this song because it's a very, uh, it's a song about um, keeping away from the temptation of women. Uh, for instance, it starts off with the lyric, uh, she's a very kinky girl, the kind you don't take home to mother, which I think we should all do that, not take girls back home to mother, because that would destroy her poor little heart. She gave birth to us, why should she see a woman that we want to fuck? Like, that's horrible. How much longer is this bit gonna go on? It's gonna go on as long as Jordan needs to. Oh, okay. As long as he needs to in order to do the thing. So keep going, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, number number two, my favorite song, number two is uh, Love Shack by the B-52s. Just a good song, good, good catchy jingle for all to listen to, really good. Uh, and of course, my d number one, number one top favorite song of all time to listen to while you, you clean your room. It's, uh, it's Horst Wessel Lied, or the popular English translation, The Flag High. It's a very brave, powerful song about the beauty of a country rising from simple, simple beginnings to great powers that would even challenge the filthy Soviets and the great allies with their postmodern beliefs. Anyways, uh, this is uh, George's top three songs, so t t tune in, tune in next time, guys. To, to check out, check out my my culture blog. Gay programming. Welcome to Gay Programming. As always, I'm your host, Fem Marks, aka Marcy, and I'm joined by my co-host. Angsty Vegan, who is also my boyfriend, secret, secretly, and is, that's Merlin over there. Hello. We're here bringing you another exciting episode of Gay Programming on a Monday. We're recording. Um, yeah, so after last episode, after the Whites of Variety Act, which was big smorgasbord of things happening. We're going to try to be a little bit more focused, try to keep uh, keep on the ball here. Um, but regardless, we are talking about a very specific thing, and that's uh, something that I'm sure we both have a lot to talk about in our own separate ways. But uh, just the general sense of bullshit everyone deals with on a constant daily basis by working a nine to five or whatever occupational shit hole uh, form you're you're stuck in right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it off to Merlin because uh, you were the one who originated this idea uh, and kind of tell me what made you want to do an episode about this. I. Uh was listening to um another lovely podcast called audible anarchism and they did a reading i'll have to send it to you maybe you can put it in like a description or something because i can't remember the name of it but they read something and it was about sabotage and i hadn't really thought about it much in like the workers unity kind of sense um so like you know basically intentionally doing things wrong at work as a way to you know cost like to sabotage yeah as, that's... as the term would go yeah i mean you know um 
And I thought it was kind of cool. Obviously something not every occupation can do. Like if you're a surgeon, maybe don't. But like... Well, I mean, it depends on who you're doing. You know, if you're a surgeon, if you're like the one luckiest Marxist anarchist uh, fucking surgeon who's like performing an autopsy on like, uh, you know, like a president or something, don't tell, you know, who who did it, you know? Just leave that up as a mystery forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, and I also just kind of wanted to talk in a general sense of like, weird work experiences or just kind of the uh vibe of being like an entry-level employee somewhere because right now you know i'm fairly content with my job i'm pretty happy with it it's very chill um but boy howdy have i had some jobs that were not so great yeah and I'm sure everybody has. Oh, and yeah. everybody uh, might be, especially if you're listening to this podcast, might be in some way complicit to employee sabotage. Uh, because God knows uh, with how many fast food chains I worked at in my time, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people eating my spit. Or there were. <laughs> you know, they already ate it. I saw them. Oh, man. You ever do that thing where, like, somebody, you know, they sit down and they have their fries sitting on the table for like 20 minutes and then they come back and say they're cold so you just like dump them back into the oil and then give them the same fucking fries again and they're like oh these are much fresher thank you you ever well, do that's that that's pretty cool i mean yeah that's pretty sick all right you know i'm i'm a full support of like I guess I shouldn't say that of fucking over people getting fast food, but, um, but you know, I, I do, I do. Only the annoying ones. Yeah. Which is most of them, all of them. Let's frankly admit it. Um, (laughs) now I've had some cool customers, but also, yeah. What, was there any example of you committing employees sabotage, sabotage? When I worked at Walmart, I let so many people steal so much shit to the point where once, uh, asset protection guy came up to me and was like hey i just wanted to give you some pointers on how to protect the assets and i was like oh thank you so much yeah i had no idea people would do that to try and steal something and then i would continue to like accidentally not ring things up and like make eye contact with people as they put something in their bag without scanning it and just like turn my head away (laughs) like i just fucking who gives a shit yeah especially when you're making like what like eleven dollars an hour yeah you're making like nothing comparatively to this like multi-conglomerate that like stretches all across the globe in many many different countries and is raking in the fucking funds by charging people for baby products that are way overpriced Literally, yeah, that shit's so expensive. I'm like, for what? It's milk powder. Like, well, yeah, but you know, it's 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 uh, I, as I've learned from the the marvelous Mister Wonderful from Shark Tank. <laughs> once you got him by the balls, that's that's what you're really <laughs> looking for. You're really looking for the time that makes them want to steal. If you if you have a product that makes people want to steal, that's that's Mister Wonderful 101. That's a good product right yeah. there. When it's small and compact, but also really expensive. And shit and replaceable. Yeah. Yeah. These are all things that you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's it's almost become like a, a, an omnipresent meme at this point, especially after and during the pandemic, that there were so many employees all across the service industry who just didn't care, just mm. did not care that their business, their companies that they were working for um, were getting fucking plundered, like, out the oh, yeah. ass because uh, people were all wearing masks and not encouraged to stop shoplifters. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I've, I've, some of my friends have literally, like, forgotten in their brains that, like, shoplifting is illegal. Like, you can't do that. And, like... <laughs> That's a, I don't think that would hold up in court. No, like it's Your Honor, I forgot. I yeah. just forgot. I do it so much that it's like second nature at this point, you know? And like I just think that's really fucking funny. Um Cause they'll just be doing that and they'll be like, Oh man, like I definitely just stole over a hundred dollars worth of shit. Like that's a felony. Mm-hmm. Um 
Which, speaking of, do you have... I always think this is very interesting. Uh, do you have a category of object that you uh, borrow the most? Not really. I mean, I honestly... I, I used to... I don't know if this would get me in hot shit. Probably not. Who gives a shit? But, Why I use the word borrow? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you know. But I, I, I borrowed all the time from, like, airports and stuff like airports. that. Airports. Oh, yeah. There's no one cares at airports, man. Like, they just fucking do not care there. So I, I like like past paying for my ticket of course mm. like i've never like i there was like definitely like probably a solid 10 years where i was like a constant flyer and i did not pay for any, anything uh when i was going through airports wow uh so i mean that that would be like the category but i mean like you know the obvious for trans films is like makeup and clothes and stuff like that but um yeah, I mean, you know, I, I honestly, like, nowadays, it's, this is for all you um, property is assessment people. Uh, I don't steal anymore nowadays. Cause, um, <laughs> I'm fucking, you if know. If you see me in your stores, do not react. Yeah, don't react, because uh, I don't steal anything more anymore. I'm th those days are long behind me, because, uh, yeah, I basically just, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an everyday schlub. I, I pay for my shit now. Mm -hmm. I'm like the end of uh, good, uh, the end of um, Goodfellas, where yeah. he's like an everyday fucking schlub. Right after I got here, I ordered some spaghetti with marinara sauce, and I got egg noodles and ketchup. Pretty much my stay, but I, I don't really. But uh, other than like, yeah, the makeup and cause well, fuck, yeah. fuck that shit, fuck. But you, I'm sorry, but there, there is no uh, nail polish that is the exact price that they're asking for. That's true. Um, yeah, no, like, I, I ask because in all the conversations I've had, it seems like people have, like, certain things or categories of things that they like to borrow more than others, and I just think that's very interesting. Like, we need to start analyzing what this says about you, like, yeah, get a, you get a fucking BuzzFeed personality quiz, like, what item would you shoplift, you know? Like, I think it's just more not really tell the item specifically, it just tells me about how how desperate you are <laughs> yeah. that's true i guess if someone's just like food yeah no, that's like oh like that's a pretty big red flag it's, it's in like oh someone's not doing too well <laughs> yeah that's true too that's yeah. true too um back in back in my prime man i did not pay for skincare products like they're in the first of all if you want good stuff that's not 90 percent water like they're in these <laughs> little tiny containers that are like forty dollars for a face wash or something and it's like organic or whatever which what the fuck does that mean but like mm -hmm. so it's, yeah. uh, it's whatever so tempting we, it's whatever we put into the fucking lotion that lets us have that so like dumb white lips think it's better for them or whatever yeah yeah <laughs> sorry this episode just became hey stealing but oh i mean yeah connected. that's that's a part of sabotage i mean and I guess, especially yeah. considering in america where there's really like no such thing as like industry anymore it's really just all like service and like yeah selling kind of shit that's it's, really true honestly sorry let me get this somewhere you're good I guess moving on from stealing in particular and more about like work related stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I guess uh, this is kind of related to in conjunction with like transness and jobs. Oh yeah. Uh, Cause we're both trans. Um, guess, guess that's uh, yeah. Breaking this fresh yeah. on the podcast. Guess what guys? We're, we're trans. coming out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, can you, uh, like how many jobs have you had uh because i feel like Ever? In, yeah just like in particular because i feel like especially with like trans people it's like tends to be a lot more with us yeah. than, <laughs> than the other let's see i started i had my first job i don't know four years ago now let me count on my fingers because i'm bad at math all right we got one two Three, oh, this is so engaging. Four. I'm thinking. You can talk while I'm thinking. <laughs> Not like that. You're going to distract me from my thinking. It'll take even longer. Oh, my God. Three. 
<laughs> like seven, I don't know. Alright, so it's not even that bad, but I... Seven I've, jobs in four years, I think, roughly. I've had upwards of probably 35 different jobs yeah. in my life. Um, and some of them were, like, probably just a couple of months. Uh, one I'm or two was definitely a couple of weeks. Granted, yeah. I guess I'm not counting, like, little cash-in-hand shit. Oh, no, that don't count that either. Yeah. I'm talking, like, full-on jobs. You go here, like, repeatedly over the course yeah. of months and stuff like that. So, um... Yeah, no, I mean, so, but, you know, out, out of those seven, seven, you said? Roughly. Roughly seven. I didn't seven. even count out to the rest. I Roughly like, seven. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and I'm, I'm like, what, what was your absolute most memorable and worst job out of those seven? Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh, yeah, that's a really good one. Because, hey, man, uh, a lot of trans people, a lot of queer people in particular work in fast food restaurants. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, why don't you tell a little bit about the fucking travesty that is Wendy's. Guess what? It's not all fun and games on the Twitter, guys. <laughs> yeah. It turns out Wendy's is a fucking horrible place to work. Oh, my God, yeah. Um, well, first of all, I was 16. It was my first job ever. Uh, there were three managers. One was, like, the store manager. The other two were shift managers. One of the shift managers, really cool guy, really sweet, uh, recently out of prison, really funny, great guy. The first one was the store manager. Literally yelled at me at one point because he was really stressed because, like, the whole system went down. And I was just looking at him like, dude, I'm 16 years old. (laughs) What do you want me to do about it? Uh, Then the other manager sent me photos of his penis and some very triggering things that I will not share for the uh, comfort of our lovely listeners, but gross shit for a 30-year-old man to be sending a 16-year-old. Yeah, and especially a 30-year-old man that is in a position of power. Yeah, like has access to your social security number and address and shit. Yeah, it's really fucking cringy that, like, I'm saying a position of power when he's a fucking manager at a Wendy's. But, um, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that is a position of power, whether we want to admit it or not. But, yeah, that's real fucked up. Yeah, and then just, like... And for, was, as far as you know, he, he never got fired from that. or had He any, was like, fired, but he just got a job somewhere else. Yeah, of course yeah. he did. So there was, like, literally, like, no repercussions for no. literally, like... Well, I guess 16 would technically be legal in Florida, but still really fucked up, like, yeah. really shitty still a minor, behavior. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially for someone I think so 16 old. in Florida is actually only legal up to 24 years old. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's yeah. Romeo and Juliet law. There. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so there was all of that, and then, uh, also, just customers suck, but y'all already know that. Like, one of my friends, this, like, racist lady, because she happened to be black this racist lady uh threw french fries at her and the store didn't have any kind of like security camera or anything whatsoever so there was they couldn't do anything about it other than just politely ask her to leave because they had no proof that she threw hot food at her face mm-hmm. um and i mean even if they did like what was like, would the company even do fucking no, anything? Like, like, I fucking doubt yeah. it. Yeah, and then... God, also, this was all... I worked there for, like, two months. So, yeah. like, this is all very compact events. Um, but then, like, the other fucking straw that broke the camel's back was uh, one of the ladies who worked there. She was very sweet, like... Called me her nina, like, very sweet lady. Um... She, uh, I never asked because, you know, it's better to not know and not have that conversation, just so nothing's on record, hypothetically, but, uh, her immigration status could have been questionable, Mm -hmm. and she was confiding in me that she noticed, like, money coming out of, like, her paychecks that was being deducted by one of the managers, and she told me that she didn't feel like she could do anything about it because she was just like waiting for her husband to get approved and come over so there was that um and just like a lot of shit (laughs) it was just a bad fucking place to work it was dirty nobody washed their hands yeah like it was yeah i i i had some similar it wasn't um a wendy's it was like 
I don't really know even like how to describe it. It was like a local burger place, I guess. Mm. I don't even remember the fucking name anymore. But um, fuck you guys if you're still open. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a very similar situation where basically uh, I was working there and I was working like five days a week uh, every single week. And there was oh, basically yeah. like a time where... I was, like, going in there every day from 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. And, like, it was that was my schedule. I did that five days a week and then had two days off, and I would just keep doing that. And there, were, there was one time where literally I got a pay uh, check, and it was, like, half what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I literally go up to the fucking manager, and um, I... I go up to the fucking manager and I'm like, yo, what's up? What's happening with my paycheck? And they're like, oh, you didn't work two weeks. Uh, it, just claiming that. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's like I would have remembered if I was gone for two fucking weeks. Yeah. Uh, and done that. It's like, I've been here every single day. And they just kept, like, denying me. They kept saying, like, I was lying. I wasn't, like, there, like, at that time. Like, they remember. And I literally, like pretty much got fired over that argument. It's weird. Uh, and I literally still was able to thankfully get my money, my full paycheck, because I had to, but still was fired. Uh, they, they didn't offer to bring me on, but I wouldn't have taken it regardless after this whole fucking shit, because that manager was going to stay on. Uh, that basically I had to use, like, my phone records essentially mm. to prove that I was on the facility and prove that I was there and prove that, that I was working essentially because of the fact that I was there and like yeah. my house was like 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I basically was that. And I, I guess at that point, maybe the boss or the owner or anything would just like said, fuck it. I, I don't care. So just pay him the rest and let him go. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely been, that was probably my worst instance of like, literally like people trying to like schlub me from pay in such a direct way. Cause yeah. I've, I've experienced that in the creative sense with like freelance work and mm. stuff. There's total like, cause yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird realm and there's a lot of opportunities for shitty people to just say like, fuck. attempt at bargaining. Yeah. Know. Or attempt bargaining or just like not pay you at all. And yeah. just like ghost you for the face of the earth. But this was literally like me at a brick and mortar fucking yeah. location working and doing something and being there. And I think this guy was literally just because I know he was like complaining about some money problems at the time. Mm. So, like, my only assumption was that he was trying to steal half my paycheck. Yeah, and just me like not be cool with that, not accept it. Yeah, that's weird. I um, yeah, that was another issue. Was I was like illegally working, like, because again, I was a minor and in school, uh, online school, so it wasn't, like, away, but, uh, I was illegally working, like, 16-hour shifts without a single break, and in Florida, if you're a minor, you cannot work an 8-hour shift without a break halfway in between. Like, you need a break every 4 hours. Uh, so 16 hours, no break, and I was working, like, I was being scheduled, like, 80 hour weeks like coming in every single day because i didn't know how to fucking say no to people and it got to the extent where like one of the district managers had to come in pull up the schedule and be like you cannot do this this minor is scheduled every single day at least eight hours each day you legally cannot do this i don't know what else to tell you yeah and it was like in because at the time I was like, oh well, they're just really short staffed. But in retrospect, I was like, bro, I dropped out of school because of this. Like, it's like kind of. It almost makes me wonder, like, what the fuck people think, uh, like labor issues like happen, like, or how yeah. they're resolved. Because uh, like, there seems to be, and it's thankfully changing, especially with the younger generations, and even I would say like the older generations are starting to kind of like get it. Some of them at least are kind of get it. that, that like businesses aren't on your side, yeah. that they can fuck you over really seriously. And they can like, they, they just, they're all about that mighty dollar, blah, 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 whatever you want to fucking say. But, uh, I still am just like so curious as to like what people's thoughts are and how like 
businesses are able to get away with such like gross acts of abuse. Oh, yeah. And we're just like c- supposed to be cool with that. And the people who th- like are the other spectrum of that, where they're basically th- uh, think that it doesn't happen. None of that mm-hmm. happens uh, because either like there's a goodwill with companies or if they're still cognizant that like companies can be bad at the very least, um, then like what, what, how do they think this shit is like protected? Yeah. Like, cause, what, cause I guarantee you like most people, especially when I didn't get like half my paycheck or maybe when you were facing sexual assault from a fucking manager, like what, what do you do in that situation? What do you do, especially in like in in my case specifically, when you're a local dealing with a local business that pretty much seems to be outright like just not complying with laws and yeah, like, like I have no way of rectifying that or have any idea of like where to go to deal with that. Oh yeah, no, and like especially in that instance, like I'm assuming you were not paid very much per hour. No, no. It was and, like, I was paid like nine bucks an hour with tips. So. Yeah, and like, so you would probably spend more money on like a lawyer to help you, you know, deal with that than you would just like losing that half of your paycheck, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I mean, th- th- yeah, no, I mean, definitely if there was like, if it had gotten to that point where like, yeah. I'm going to sue the, the business, like, I have no ability of funding that or are right. or, or really even have the incentive to do that even if i was gun-ho enough to like be like i'm going to sue this local burger place for my money exactly yeah and like with the manager situation like i just quit because i did report it to another manager and thankfully it was the really cool one and he You know, like, we spend a lot of time talking about it and how do you want to move forward and all that stuff. But, like, um, yeah, like, there were so many people who were, like, you should really get those messages and those images he sent you on a flash drive and take it to the police. But, like, are they going to, because are they going to fucking, like, protect me from him if I do that? Absolutely Mm. not. Like, I'm still working with him at this point. Yeah. It was just like, and then when I did report him, he was one of the cool managers there, so a lot of people became really shitty with me. So I just quit. I was just like, I'm just, the job is not worth this. I'm making like seven fifty an hour. Like, I'm just gonna leave. Which sucks, because nobody should be in a situation where they have to do that. But, yeah, ultimately, like, you know, that Wendy's is still standing there. They didn't lose anything from it other than a manager and an employee who'd been there for, like, two months. Yeah, and that even even a bigger picture is that this is a, you know, multi-million dollar company that has a storefront that literally is facilitating sexual assault. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure if that was quote-unquote brought to the company's attention, they would have quite some theatrics to express over that about yeah. how awful they feel and how they're going to donate 5% of their profits <laughs> to sexual assault causes across the world, like, or whatever, fucking ever. But it doesn't stop the ultimate end thing is that this market based system of employment is a fucking rape machine. Oh, and yeah. I mean that quite literally and quite figuratively in both extremes mm-hmm. because uh, it, it just imbues, it imbues nothing but uh, you essentially signing your life away. And uh, if you want to live, then you got to do exactly what the, what the boss man says. And if you don't, then you get fired and you got to hope another boss man gives you another chance. Exactly, yeah, no, like the whole system of like complacency or starve to death is very bizarre and the fact that it's so normalized in a lot of our brains is even more bizarre really Mm. um especially when it's so like it definitely comes in waves you know like i remember at first like you know in my instance the first protest i ever went to was a climate strike and i remember seeing you know i worked at a walgreens at the time uh which was fine enough um but i just remember all of the plastic and all of the waste and all of like everything going on there and it really kind of got to me and that's one of the reasons i left that job and then 
later on when I had another retail job, there was a manager who was pretty nice and, you know, it was like during my third week there or something and she was like, oh, I love how you always find something to do during your shift, unlike so-and-so who was a really close friend of mine there. And I remember just thinking like, why did you have to do that? Why did you have to tack that on? Why couldn't you have just pat me on the back and leave it alone? And I talked to my friend about that, who is an older, wiser uh, leftist, you could say. Uh, and they were like, no, that's like a very blatant managerial trick to like turn you guys against each other and make you easier to control by them. And I was like, holy shit, you're right. And it's just crazy how much you realize when you start to realize. <laughs> Yeah, you know, your business is toxic. It's a very toxic relationship. And, it's, and yeah, I mean, that's all too common with, like, managerial tactics. Oh, yeah, country. like the psychological abuse and, like... Yeah, and I mean, like, because, you know, I, I think kind of kind of stepping a little, little sidestep but connected to this conversation is um, I think this is a really good signal, too, where, you know... The question of labor in this country cannot only be in the realm of how much we're paid. Yeah. Um, that's all good. Money makes life easier. It makes uh, life better for people. It gets you the resources that you're in need of and for the leisure time that you're so in need for. That's all good. And we definitely need that in the discussion of labor. But... You know, there, it should really become really like as a, a clear sign that things are really fucked up in the work environments of these many, many companies. Uh, that when you see places like McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's offering, you know, $15 an hour, sometimes up to $20 an hour I've seen, starting wage. But they still can't fill these positions, even with that supposedly high wage. Because first off, for like fifteen dollars, that's nothing. That's mm -hmm. fucking nothing now. That we asked for that like six years ago. But even besides that, even if they were offering fucking thirty dollars an hour for every fry cook that starts at their company, the problem is people don't want to deal with that fucking abuse. Mm -hmm. People don't want to deal with a fucking lack slack jaw motherfucker who's the district manager, who fucking berates and pushes these people around. Like, I remember another, I know we're focusing on, like, the service and food industry, but that's pretty much all there is to do in America nowadays. But we were at a Denny's yeah, uh, on a trip. Yeah, IHOP, yeah. Oh, yeah, not IHOP, sorry. No, you're good. Uh, but, yeah, we were at an IHOP, and uh, we were, you know, it was our anniversary. We were going on a little trip. We're and... name dropping so many companies. I wonder who's going to sue us for defamation. <laughs> uh, cease and desist must first start before they can do anything. So, so I will be. I will be waiting for those messages. I just think it's really funny. Uh, <laughs> Continue though. Yeah, we were at on our anniversary breakfast on the way back. Yeah, we're on our way back. We're we're getting breakfast at IHOP, and uh, the they're. The, I don't know what's going on, but I think it's like people are, this place is understaffed and uh, a lot of people are coming in because it's like breakfast rush. Uh, and this haggard host, hostess is like desperately and very muddily trying to calm herself down, get the place like organized and everything, and also like trying to manage potential customer outburst at the slightest uh at the slightest like question of their convenience or whatever and uh anyways they we were we were sitting down we had gotten a table and merlin had overheard that basically a fa that hostess had asked a family that there was going to be a 30 minute long wait not even um, it was like 20 20 minute long wait yeah, or something right. like that but yeah there was going to be a kind of long ish wait before you got sat sit down uh and that was a deal breaker of course for this family so they said okay we're gonna go find somewhere else and the district manager was at the place at that time and she was running around and disciplining everybody uh and she basically as this family goes out the door basically like chastises this girl yeah no like right in front of everybody it's just like no there's not even gonna be a wait 
I'm gonna go get them because not on my watch is anyone leaving as if anyone has any control over that. Yeah. And she proceeds to walk out the door, yell to get this family's attention because they're already like back at their car and be like, come on in, we'll get you seated right now. And like that kind of bullshit of like undermining people could like one, if they're if she's making weights disappear, she's definitely overworking people and like seating people too close for COVID restrictions and like all of that stuff. But also like that kind of undermining of employees puts people in really dangerous situations because it's what makes people think that if they scream at employees, they'll get their way. Because, like, a lot of times when employees tell you, oh, we can't do that, or there's going to be a wait, or I can't sell you this, or, like, whatever it is, there's nothing they can do about it. But when you come in and publicly, like, I'm going to fix it then it makes people think all situations can be fixed like that. And it's just, it's such bullshit. You should not do that. Like, stand by your employees, have their backs if you're a manager for whatever reason listening. Like, Yeah, and that they're, it's it just, like, it kind of seems like a, a really big part of the, of people, especially like that district manager where they view people and literally their employees, they're not human beings. They are people, they're, they're slaves. But a nicer way of saying it would be that they're people who are facilitating a, a desired need. Mm. And that is, desired need is to provide the service or product that will make me money. Yeah. Um, and it's, 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 very, it's very, you know, it's very futile. It's very uh, one-sided. And it's, um, you know, they're... they're there are definitely times where I've been in a traditional hire situation where my employer was a good guy mm. and that was all right. And that was good. It made the time less shitty, you know, but that also just doesn't mean that like, just because you're dealing with that, like a pleasant moment in the storm of employment, that this situation just can like, it cannot continue. Because people are just becoming more and more wise that it's not even just about the money. It's not even just about the health care plans or anything like that. It's about a genuine lack of any urgency in your life. And especially any kind of autonomy in the one thing that you've dedicated, whether you want to or not, you're like a very significant portion of your life to. Yeah. Uh, with no say no gratitude and certainly no benefits from the 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 plunders of prosper oh yeah no like even i've seen some of the nicest funniest managers become absolute horrible people when you use too many sick days or whatever the fuck it is like are you even suggest the idea that maybe a union would be in the best interest of people working here so here's a funny question uh what is the pettiest reason you quit a job? The pettiest reason I quit a job? Yeah, like, just, like, you know, in retrospect, you were like, oh, maybe that wasn't too big of a deal, or maybe it was, but either way, you were just like, fuck you, I'm out. It was probably, I, I don't even, like, it, it was just, like, some really early, like, warehouse jobs, and they would tell me, like, I couldn't dress a certain way. <laughs> Like, and it, and it wasn't even, like, stuff where it's, like, oh, I'm in a food production warehouse and I'm wearing shorts. Like, I understand that's a no-go. But there would be people, like, I would be working in a warehouse and I would wear, like, a shirt with, like, an up down upside-down cross or something like that. And the manager would be, like, you need to go home or you need, you need to change that. Like, you can't be having that. So there was, like, definitely times where I would quit for that. I still probably would quit regardless because I'm working in a fucking warehouse. Fuck yeah. you for telling me what I can and can't wear. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that would probably be my pettiest reason. The other reasons were just, like, I was moving on with life or there was, like, a serious, like, problem. Yeah. Uh, pettiest reason I ever quit is I worked at the store and they had this, like, app for um using like pto and calling off and all that stuff you did everything through the app you did not call the store to do that um 
so I had a psychiatrist appointment, and you know how psychiatrist appointments go. A lot of times you have to wait upwards of a fucking month for those things. Mm. Uh, I'm at the three month, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I I had one booked, and about they wanted a minimum of two weeks if you were going to you know, not show up for a certain day, you were usually scheduled, they wanted like, hey, at least give us two weeks notice so that we can schedule someone else and get that sorted out. And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. So it's about two and a half weeks out. And I put in like this day, doctor's appointment, not going to be there. I wasn't requesting to use PTO. It wasn't a holiday or any kind of big day like that, just a regular old day. And without even talking to me, without even giving me a reason or like hey do you really need to go to this appointment which like of course but you know without any follow-up they just denied my day off request and I never went back after that I literally just did not fucking go in I was like absolutely not um which like the audacity of that like oh my god shit like that it's really funny but it's also really not you know when it's like why do you think you have that much control over my life? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's definitely, like, uh, I, I think, fuck yeah, like, why not? Like, you, I, I, I respect that way. I don't really even think it's that petty, especially <laughs> over, like, an appointment. Um, but, yeah, it's... And I got another job, like, within a month. So, like, it oh, was yeah. fine, but, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um, but, I mean, like, that's also kind of by design, even, uh, that, like, you know of how quick in the turnover of all these jobs are. There doesn't really seem to be much of a career path for much, most people. That's why like all like education places are always emphasizing like, are you sick and tired of working at the CVS like a yeah. fucking loser? Well, c- come to, c- come to Phoenix, uh, mm-hmm. inter- intellectual school online, yeah. premium package. And you can become an electrical engineer. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, uh, but even, you know, it's, it's just like, I don't even know where I'm going with this. It's kind of like jumping off a cliff to a different thing, but it's, it's, it is kind of just like, I don't know, ultimately like really depressing that there's no like just random ass apprenticeships that you like, cause you read like old biographies from yeah. like old people and they're just like, yeah, so sir, sir, sir Anthony, who invented the b- 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 started off by being a poor farmhand and found an inventor on a traveling train and became his apprentice and, <laughs> and yeah. revolutionized the gas pump. Yeah, right. Like, it, it, like you know, you never, you never like really even get vibes like that nowadays. Yeah, no, it's all, like, like there like, are jobs that like. Shit require apprenticeships or shadowing or like whatever but it's it seems all very hard to get now i guess just due to how open everything is for better or for worse there's so much more competition with that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. but yeah no like at job interviews ask them about the turnover rate i swear to god (laughs) like yeah and i mean even these you know the, the the even this like insistence of like, there, there are, like, industries even where there used to be, like, really long-standing careers in these industries. Mm-hmm. For instance, and I'm going to relate this uh, to to my industry, but, you know, like, I, I was, wanted to, I studied film, I wanted to be in the film industry, and uh, there was a time back in the, in the Golden Rose times, mm-hmm. while there was a bunch of racism and sexism... Uh, there was also a lot of people, uh, who had good job security, good, like, reoccurring, like, funds yeah, and... Upward were, mobility. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, it was a really, like, good time to be working if you found a job in this industry. And, um, now it's gotten to this point, though, where, uh, the means of producing content and also the ability to learn how to become a filmmaker is very accessible it's become very mainstreamed uh, and like optimized to basically be like a really high and accessible field of doing. Essentially, you know, every asshole's got a podcast, every asshole's got a YouTube, and everybody's filmed at least six videos or whatever. 
Um, and basically what I'm, what I'm getting at is that it's gotten to this point where basically the higher ups in the industry, the people who are really like power players in the whole thing, the people who own the real estate essentially have gotten to this point where they've made the film industry and demanded people be everything. That mm -hmm. you couldn't just be a sound guy who's really good at sound or a camera guy who's really good at a camera. Uh, you have to be everything and you have to be everything for the company or the production house or whatever. So they're very much demanding in a very toxic way so much out of creatives to the point where no creative project like feels fulfilling or any content that's published is like worth anything. It's not art anymore. It's all just like this constant pouring of like shit created by overworked film students mm -hmm. who are basically the like content slaves, the content monkeys in the basement typing uh, to these big like fucking like big players in the film industry that have basically like have completely destroyed the film unions as they stood back in the day. Oh yeah, no, I mean I've seen like so many people, I've seen people who are like graphic designers talk about it and people who make music talk about it and especially in the sense of like I'm a graphic designer. That's what I do. I am not a social media manager. Stop telling me to make TikTok trends. Like, I... That's not what I fucking do. If I need to be on social media, I would work with the social media manager. And it's just like... Yeah, there's definitely that very American, like... Your career is everything you are. And mm -hmm. you need to be everything in your career. Which... Is and it, you need like and not even just that you need six different careers yeah you need to be a need grinder a side on hustle. all fronts yeah and like it's crazy when you hear about other countries and like not even just how much more vacation time they have or, and stuff like that but also they're like or how not every single person has a cbd slash soap company yeah how that, that's not a thing how etsy has not become the the modern workforce of america <laughs> yeah no and like um i've even seen some places where they're trying to like pass laws where you do not give your employer your cell phone number. They do not need to reach you when you're not at work. Like, that's that's your time. And if they need you, they'll schedule you kind of deal. And I'm like, oh, my God, could you imagine? Yeah, and actually, like, in Austria, uh, employers are actually only allowed to talk to their employees through carrier pigeons. It's <laughs> actually a very, very archaic system. I don't know why they've updated, not updated, but I, I support <laughs> it. The unions in Austria are strong, and they're keeping the pigeons employed. <laughs> Um, yeah, but, like, could you imagine? Because, like, comparatively, I remember when I needed to take a sick day for work uh, one time, the manager gave me my coworkers' phone numbers and told me to text them, asking them to cover my shift. And I was like, one, it's gotta be, like, I don't know if illegal, but it's gotta be wrong for you to give out your employees' personal information to other employees. Mm -hmm. Also... That's your, you're the manager, you schedule, why do I, as the one making $10 an hour, need to text random people like, hey, I can't make it to work tomorrow, can you come in even though I don't fucking know you? Like, it is crazy how much, like, workplaces, like, ask if information-wise, yeah. like, from, the, <laughs> from their employees, it's like, it's just like, I'm, like, listen, I understand that you're a CVS cashier, but I gotta know your social security number. <laughs> Yeah. Just in case what I what is you know, your blood type? Yeah, what? Just in case I get shot and I need a blood sample real quick. Yeah, right. It's just like, like I can kind of understand like some of it because I'm like, well, you know, the IRS and whatever. Even though you know, obviously, that's all obnoxious capitalist bullshit. But yeah, like there's just so much where you're like, you need this for why? Like, and I guess some of it they. Like, especially with, like, oh, are you disabled, or what is your sex, or whatever. Like, they will give you, like, the prefer not to disclose thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you use that, people are weird towards you. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, there's the classic example of, like, 
uh, of the felony question where basically yeah. people like there's three answers now in most states mm-hmm. I think there's a couple or there's now still two but most of them are three and it's yes no prefer not to answer and <laughs> most people still consider two of those answers yeah. to be one answer yeah uh on this note just kind of a funny story uh, I'm pretty sure I told you this when it happened, but there was one time I started a job at, like, a retail place, and, um, I got called into the store manager's office, which was weird, because I'd never even spoken to her or really met her at all. It was a very big store. Um, so I go in there, like, hey, did I do something? And she was like, no, I have kind of a personal question. And I was like, oh, fuck, what is it? Uh, and she goes, so... A few of your co-workers have asked me what pronouns to use for you, and I checked on the form to see your gender, but I see you had put prefer not to disclose. So basically, she was just being like, I tried to check your file, whether you've got a dick or not. You put you wouldn't say, so now I have no goddamn idea. <laughs> now I need you to disclose because yeah. <laughs> it has been brought up. <laughs> yeah, and I just think that's so funny on a lot of levels. Like, one, how she was so hopeful it would be in the handy-dandy, like, application, and it was just, nope. Well, yeah, man, every, but, every one of these fucking managers, they just look at forms all day. Yeah, days. but also, like... The idea that my coworkers are going to the highest authority, the store manager. Like, yo, you think he has a dick or not? Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, they're just, they're, they're curious. I mean, you know, where like, were you working? just ask me. Where were you, where were you working? Walmart. Well, you know, what, what else you gotta do while you're stocking shit or, like, <laughs> looking at ugly people walk by? Like, you gotta think about your... I didn't bo- even work in, like, the stock area, though. I worked in cashiers, which well, is a Well, you know, it spreads section. around. Word gets around in uh, those places. They don't got a lot to talk about. Not a lot of shit happens. <laughs> not anymore. my Walmart. They That's a lot true. to talk about. I should about. say that a lot of shit happens. Walmart. Yeah, this like was a, a, this was Sarasota, Florida Walmart yeah. on like Beniva. It's a cultural center point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I remember I used to live across from that Walmart before it was there, and they demolished a church to build the parking lot. Nice. That's yeah. that's I, I I love that, especially considering the Waltons are big old christians <laughs> yeah. big old catholics and they tore down a church for a fucking parking yeah, lot yeah baby yeah for their big ass parking lot it wasn't even <laughs> a full-size walmart it was a little neighborhood market oh great oh uh, even better <laughs> even better like their their shit property that isn't even making money it just yeah. is like an outpost for them yeah oh god that's awesome yeah. i love that <laughs> also through all these details i feel like you can definitely figure out exactly which walmart it was that's okay yeah yeah well we, we ain't there anymore no, too late yeah no. too late we were long gone you can't you... prove i ever worked there i could be lying this whole time yeah we're, we've been kaiser so it up we've been looking <laughs> at the wall and coming up with stories oh, yeah. to tell you people to get you off our trail i've never stolen anything exactly. in my life we're not trans either we're actually <laughs> <laughs> we're two... i don't think we can pull that one off yeah there. we're not we're not trans we're actually two arab, uh, arab guys in serbia trying to make uh, money trying to i don't our... think we can pull that one off either i don't yeah. think that's a believable lie well who's to know where the <laughs> lie begins and truth Not you, clearly. (laughs) Most people, but not you. Well, thank you, as always, for tuning in to listen to another great episode of Gay Programming. Uh, It was stayed pretty on track for the most part. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Very focused. We we did it. We did it. No foot play this time. No, Um, no, 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 that. Yeah. We learned our lesson. It's episode 15. We're starting to become good. We're getting good at this now. Really? We're at 15? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's episode 15 now. Wow, congrats to us. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations for many more to come. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you can check us out on Instagram by Gay Programming, where we uh, upload memes and get, uh, get updates on when we're getting a new episode out. 
Uh, we also have personal Instagrams. Uh, Angsty Vegan is Merlin's handle, and he is a good life, like life blog kind of Instagram. Really cool if you want to check that out. Got some book reviews on there. Uh, and I go by Femme Marks, and I upload poems and zines on there if you're into that kind of shit. Uh, as always, uh, we'll see you again real soon. Stay safe out there. We love you, and bye. Love y'all. Bye. Heat in my vein like vernacular. Cook up the beat with a spatula. Y'all are not ready for action. I'm smoking these rappers and feeling spectacular. Making a killer like massacre. Watch out, I'm whipping my wrist. Right on my city, been pissed, but I show them love. I'm not the one that's at risk. My homie told me that when people rise up against you, it's the sign of your destiny real. Fake ones been hating because they know that one day you're making it. Jealousy's all they can feel. Plugging the phone, drifting my zone. Pain in the future when thinking alone. About when I'm grown, already blown. How'd I get best with this beautiful home? You were the sight, beautiful life. Beautiful sex, my husband and wife. Beautiful children, people who want to come kill me because I'm expressing my rights. Hopefully I am not smoking the nicotine pack up and kill you like they on a mission. Cigarettes part of my nutrition. Rhyming like I got two. Kicking addiction. I used to tell myself that I was nothing Victim to the poison, I was huffing Now my name come up like no discussion That's all day, man I say I'm bluffing in